Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody, live from Harlem in New York City. It's Alex and it's the Ramble, and we're here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. Hey, I love I just heard. I just heard some interesting news. <laughs> What's that? Uh, a the uh, Israeli uh, uh, intelligence just put a bunch of people in the hospital. They f- managed to figure out how to blow up their cell phones. Yes, I saw that. Wow, how could you do that? But, but it did, but I think there were hundreds of them. I don't think it was just one or yeah, two. Yeah, it was a lot, yeah. And they had a shot of one guy getting blasted. He had the, you know, he had a side, he had like a, a fanny pack or whatever. And it had a, but here's what happens. Um, uh, the Hezbollah uh, does not give their people cell phones. They give them pagers. Hey, the, they still have pagers? Wow. Well, the reason they give them pagers is because pagers can't be tracked. Cell phones can be. Right. And so they prefer to, to uh, communicate by pager. Well, I don't know how the... It must, this is like some... God, you know, like some movie or something. But the Israeli peop- uh, uh, forces or whatever managed to get pagers in the hands of these members of Hezbollah that at a certain time they push one button and they all blow up. <laughs> wow. Wow. I mean, if you made a movie like that, they wouldn't buy it. they say, ah, it's too impossible, you know. That's exactly. They believe it was Israel. I mean, who else would uh, blow up uh, people's uh, unless uh, maybe they were just bad pagers? I don't know. Yeah. Well, sometimes cell phones blow up. So. Well, the lithium-ion batteries blow yeah. up. Yeah. But these things actually, physically, when they they all blew up at the same time. So how bad of an injury does it get? Well, I mean, some people were badly injured, and others, you know, were only, it was only minor. But, geez, what an, what an idea, <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I, if I were an intelligence person, I couldn't think of that one. No, I know the, uh, the Chinese army has some helmets where they can just blow up their own soldiers. Really? Yeah. Why? Either, uh, that's a good question. Why would you blow up your own people? <laughs> I mean, your own soldiers. Yeah. Maybe it's a way of controlling the soldiers? That's probably it, yeah. Helmets that would blow up? Man, yeah, I... you, be, you, you better not uh, desert. <laughs> it, it, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah. Anyway, that 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 was a big story today. Although by the well, time that was this... like uh, Day of the Dolphin, weren't they teaching dolphins to deliver bombs or something? That old movie. <laughs> oh God! You know, it, uh, well, dolphins, um, dolphins wouldn't normally want to hurt man, but I suppose you could. I don't think it was ever a situation where they made dolphins blow people up. There have been stories about dolphins. This was a great story. During World War II, somebody, I can't remember who, you know, got their their ship got blown up or whatever, and they they wound up in a a lifeboat, you know, and um, they um, were out in the ocean. And ahead of them was an island, but the island was a Japanese-held island, so they didn't want to go there. And the dolphins came along, and because they were so friendly to man and wanted to save them, they pushed them towards the island. (laughs) And and they got caught by the uh, Japanese. 
Yeah. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, I don't know what you do. Do you try to reason with a dolphin? Like, no, don't. I No, I don't want to go there. You know, I know you're trying to do something nice for me because dolphins love human beings. And they will try to save them if they're in danger or whatever. And that's very nice. But don't send me over to an island held by the Japanese. No. Which reminds me of racism. I love racism. Uh, I, I really, I mean, I hate to say that. It sounds bad, doesn't it? I like that racism. Bad. <laughs> I like it when it comes to comedy, okay? People forget that comedy in this country, at one point, was all race comedy. You know, you had, like, the Jewish comics that would be doing the dialects, you know? And uh, you'd have the black comics who were doing, like, Step and Fetch It and Mantan Moreland were doing their bit. And, and at one point, racism was kind of something that we lovably laughed at. Would you disagree with me? Oh, it's a big part of it, yeah. I mean, um, well, look how, uh, look how much laughs uh archie bunker got <laughs> exactly exactly but you know they were there was there was a kind of thing about races in there was race comedy all the comedians in vaudeville did dialect acts you know i mean uh, what was it we had uh chico marx was doing an italian and chico marx was an italian he was terribly... Yeah, he did do the Italian, right, yeah. Italian accent, yeah. Uh, you know, as uh, and I don't, to this day, I don't hear anybody who's Italian ever complain about it. But what I do hate is when somebody like TCM shows uh, Gone with the Wind, they feel it necessary ahead of time to say there are certain racial stereotypes in this motion picture which are not looked upon as positive today. But we have to take it in which the contest text in which it was made. Hey, we know that, okay? That's so stupid. You know? I mean, uh, uh, and let's face it, Butterfly McQueen didn't know about birth and babies. So, you know, I mean... I I just I I what I hate is that we have thrown to the wolves a bunch of great comics in this world, who were in fact race comics, the Step and Fetchets, for instance. All Step and Fetchet ever did was create a character everybody else wanted to do. Uh, he wasn't trying to set up a stereotype. There was no stereotype until Step and Fetchet came along. And it was only a stereotype, not because of Step and Fetch It, but because of Mantan Moreland and Willie Best and people like that who were trying to capitalize on his success. And so we don't sit around going, you don't see a bunch of uh, black artists holding a uh, testimonial dinner to the memory of Step and Fetch It. <laughs> and they really should. He was a great comic. Really, I I don't I don't think I've seen much of him. Well, you know, he he was the one that was it, that created the the lazy Negro, okay? Okay. Uh, as a character, not as a you know, not as anything else, but as a funny comedic character, which it was. But it was so successful that everybody says he created a stereotype. So you know. I guess I. And what, what about Amos and Andy? Amos and Andy was a different situation. I think you know the horrible thing about Amos and Andy was these were two black characters being played by white guys, Freeman Gosden and Charles Carell, and they created Amos and Andy and they played Amos and Andy. But every other actor on that radio show was black. Really? Okay. They were the largest employer of black talent in America. Wow. So the question is, yeah, these two white guys are playing black guys, all right. But the good of it is all these black actors and comedians were getting work. 
So where's the bad in that? That's a good thing. Yeah. And and also, it wasn't as though Amos and Andy were these two buffoony characters. You gotta remember that only Andy was the buffoon. Amos was a hard working guy who owned the Sunshine Cab Company. You know, and he he was a hard working guy. Yeah, uh, I thought it was like there was kind of positive uh Oh, in in uh, in Amos and Andy, there were black lawyers, black doctors. You know, all the professions were represented on Amos and Andy. Uh, but maybe there was one. You know, there's the kingfish who was a buffoon. But this is situation comedy. Aren't characters in situation comedy, you know, extreme? So you know, I often felt that there was that, that was there was a. a bad thing that happened to Amos and Andy. And when they went to television, they were all black. Okay? And uh, there was some fine talent playing Amos and Andy. I think the guy who played Andy had been a major director in black films. Um, and uh, Spencer was his name? Uh, I'm trying to remember what the names of the two actors were who played Amos and Andy. But, I mean, nothing but black actors. And, and uh, when finally they were, they, went, they, were, they went off the air, but then they went into syndication, but they had to be taken out of syndication because the NAACP, which, by the way, is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. <laughs> you know, if I go up and call you colored, you don't like that very much. You know, they, yet they have an organization called the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And they complained about it, and it got taken out of syndication. wasn't played anywhere for years. And here was all this talent, these, these great comedians and comic actors, black actors who were represented on this show and had work and got meaningful work, and it was just taken away from them. So, I mean, I, I always felt there was, there was a, a great disparity about, you know, Amos and Andy and the fact that they really, they really were a form of employment for black actors in this country. Yeah, yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I mean, I could see if, you know, in the old days when the, on radio, it was the most popular show probably in the history of radio. Uh, and it, two white guys were playing these two characters, but the rest of them were played by black actors. And, um, and, and they did that on purpose, too. They didn't want to have a bunch of white guys imitating black guys. Uh, nobody had more respect for black performers than uh, uh, the guys who created Amos and Andy. So, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's an amazing story. The other one that bothered me, did you ever see a picture when you were a kid called Song of the South? Disney, no. Disney picture? Um, it, it is a picture that after a certain time, Disney took out of distribution in the United States. You could still get videos of it and so on in other countries, but you couldn't get it here. They were ashamed of it. And it was not a, a picture they should have been ashamed of. It was Disney wanted to do this movie of Song of the South, which was a, a, about this kid who uh, creates a friendship with a black... This, is, this isn't during slavery. This is during the uh, South after slavery when you still had people working the plantations, but they were working for a living. They were getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's about that period of time and about this little white kid who meets up with this black guy named Uncle Remus, who's a storyteller, who tells him these stories about Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Fox and so on and so forth. And the kid has a meaningful relationship with this guy when he has no meaningful relationship with his parents. And it's, a, it's in many ways a beautiful picture, and it it's you can't find it anywhere. Go go try and find a copy of it in the United States. I mean, I have <laughs> I have a copy of it 
uh, I shouldn't say that. The Disney police will be over here any minute. But I have a copy of it, so I've seen it. And I wrote an article once for Hustler that went, you know, who, who, killed song, who Killed Uncle Remus was the name of the article. And I just felt it was a terrible injustice that uh, Disney even went out and did something Disney never did. He hired a left-wing Jew to write the script because he felt that a, a left-wing Jew would feel more empathy towards a black character than a white writer would or a non-Jewish writer would. So, you know, I mean, it had all these wonderful things going for it. And the song won an Academy Award for best song, zippity doo which to this day you can find a copy of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what was even more interesting was that the guy who played Uncle Remus won a special Academy Award for an extraordinary performance by an actor, and they gave him a special Academy Award. And his performance, on the whole, can never be seen in the United States. And who was he? Um, uh, 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 God, I just, you know, you're asking me questions when my mind is suddenly going to mush. <laughs> um, Basket. Basket. Charles Basket, I think, was his name. And did he work much after that? Uh, he, he worked. He was a working actor. He wasn't a big actor, but he was a working actor. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the guy who, who voiced um, Br'er Rabbit and uh, Br'er Fox, I think, he, uh, that actor wound up on Amos and Andy. I think he played, he played the lawyer, Calhoun, if I'm not mistaken. I may, I may be mistaken about this. But, <laughs> uh, but you know, these were... It, it, uh, it was uh, it, white people trying to make a decision that something was racist. You know, let the black audience say that. Let the black audience come right, along. Right, yeah. I don't think there's ever been a black backlash against Song of the South. It was just Disney when everything became very proper and so on, decided this film should not be seen in the United States. You could still buy like a laser disc of it in Japan, for instance. Um, but you couldn't buy it here. And then at Dis oh, this is the best part. At Disney World, they had a ride based on Song of the South. <laughs> so kids would take this ride and they'd see this Br'er Bear and Br'er Fox and Br'er Rabbit and so on. And they didn't know what, what it was. They had no idea. You know, and it was just a ride. It was a kind of a mountain ride or something. Uh, and, and it was a ride for years. They've now taken it down and replaced it with something else. And some other excuse for singing zippity doo -dah, you know. But, I mean, it, so that, this is this is white people making decisions for black people about what is racist and yeah, not racist. Yeah, no, nothing kills fun more than a guilty white liberal. <laughs> exactly. <God>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you put it so, so, so <laughs> succinctly. Right. Yeah, what little I remember, I've seen, heard snippets of Amos and Andy, and it, I thought it was really funny. Well, the TV show was very funny. There was a Christmas show that was just, just uh, wonderful, in which it's about um, Amos, uh, the cab driver, and it's Christmas, and he's telling his daughter some kind of story or something, and it's just a warm, wonderful kind of like Christmas show, uh, and it's so the the show at times so humanized black people in this country yeah, and, uh... that it really had value. And people just go, a lot, yeah. people go, well, I remember Andy was like this buffoon and the kingfish was a buffoon and the lawyer Calhoun was kind of a buffoon. And I go, it's a sitcom. You know, that's like saying, you know, Lucy was a buffoon. Of course she was. Yeah, It wouldn't course. have been funny if she wasn't, you know. And nobody goes around and says, well, that's demeaning to women, you know. These were some fine comedic actors doing their chops. And then there were straight parts, too. I mean, they had doctors who were 
not buffoons at all, but basically it's a sitcom. And in sitcoms, you go for the laughs. But in that sitcom, the buffoon was Andy and the straight guy was Amos. And he was had a family and a wonderful kid and a wife he loved. And uh, he was a hardworking cab driver, you know? I mean, what, what's bad about that? And the first time blacks saw their race represented on TV. I mean, the most, the worst thing you will ever see, however, there was an Amos and Andy movie in which Freeman, uh, Charles Freeman, Charles Correll and uh, Freeman, I can't remember his first name right now, uh, both played Amos and Andy, and that was embarrassing. And they felt it was embarrassing. And they pretty much pulled the movie out of distribution because they owned all rights to Amos and Andy. And they said, never again are we going to play these characters visually. And that's Ooh. why when it went to TV, they didn't play okay. the characters, you know. But they found very good actors who could do it, so, you know. So here what we've done, it, it, we've taken a whole group of black actors who were very important. Uh, they were they most of them were working what was called race films at the time, at the time which were movies which uh, uh, you know were made for a black audience all right because in those days you know we had two different societies here and you had for show business you had black race you know movies and then you had race records there were labels that were basically aimed at black audiences. And and these people never got their just due. And the fact that you don't let them be seen today because they appeared on Amos and Andy is a great uh, uh, disrespect, I think, of them and their talent. And I think you yeah. as a performer can relate to that. You know? You know, say they finally decide to hire Larry Vowles Brown to be on a sitcom... But it was then deemed to be not proper, and your performance could never be seen again. That would incense you. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, again, it's, you know, you, you're right. It's white liberals. It's the white, the whites are the ones that sat down. And, and I, I think who, whoever was running the NAACP at that time, I think were, there were a lot of whites running it as well. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know. Blacks for their entire history have been told what's right and wrong. I know. When they should be allowed to make up their own mind. And I just, you know, as a performer, I hate the fact that these perform other performers never got their just due. Because what do they have but but their performances as the, as the uh, uh, you know, as, as their art? I mean, how would you feel if all your comedy was, you know, Suddenly decided to be in bad taste, and we can't ever see Larry Bubbles Brown again <laughs> on stage. At this point, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter at this point. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I always point to you as one of those comedians who's still working. You know, a lot of comedians we know have quit the business. Yeah, I, maybe I'll set the record for being the oldest working comic. I don't know. Well, you do have an act which is timeless, you know. I mean, you can, you're still doing the same material today you did 20 years ago, some of it. Yeah, it's evergreen. It's all, uh, you know, Yeah. First, personal, uh, I guess. And it's what I've said o quite often is, you know, when they, when they go, you know, this is not funny, that's not funny. Funny is funny, okay? And, and... Uh, I, I just don't understand why we suddenly, you know, we, we have a period of time where people are, their performances are okay, and then all of a sudden they're not. What? You know, if they were funny once, they're funny now. I think all the characters in Gone with the Wind are important to the, to the, to the movie because that's the way it was back then, you know? We, it's our it's our denial of what we did in this country that was horrible and disgusting. Oh, I think they weren't. They trying to edit out the older movies of people smoking. That's how bad it's got. They've gone back and done that. I think they did that with James Bond. 
Unbelievable. He's smoking a cigarette. They took it out of his hand. You know, I mean, they can do it now. But, you know, there was a time when people smoked. Hell, you remember when you went to the doctor and he smoked? <laughs> yeah. He went there. I remember when doctors recommended cigarettes. <laughs> Nine out of ten doctors recommended Rockies. Yeah, right. I didn't know a single good doctor who recommended a lucky. Anyway, I hope <laughs> I haven't talked too much, but this is a topic that we, you get me on it, and I just, you know, I'm so mad because I, I stand up for the performers, you know. So, I'm sorry if well, I yeah. could, I'm sorry if Imagine, I Imagine, it's so hard to get an acting job. Imagine how hard it was to be black and <laughs> trying to get an acting job back yeah. then. And all of a sudden you got one on a show called yeah. Amos and Andy, Lucky You. You know. Anyway, hey, listen. Uh, I hope I didn't talk too much about that. You know. You never talk enough. Oh well, I've liked the, I like I like hearing you talk too. Anyway, that's Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. We'll talk with you next week, right, Larry? As we we'll always see. do. We're getting close to that 250 point. I 250. Yeah. I didn't check how many this makes it today, but I will and okay. mention it <laughs> next time, ladies and gentlemen. Larry Bubbles. Brown. Thanks, Larry. See you next time. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, there we go. There's Larry Bubbles Brown. Let me just, uh, let me see here. Let me bring this up. Where do we, where, where is that? Oh, there we go. Okay. I, uh, you know, I do have to do these things. You know, I do everything. I'm the chief uh, bottle washer around here. So, anyway, hello, everybody. How are you? It's Alex. It's uh, Friday. And, uh, 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 by the way, it was Charles Carell and Freeman Gosden. Those were the people who did Amos and Andy. I was getting them all wrong, I was saying. Uh, Freeman, what was his last name? Uh, you know. Charles Carell and Freeman Gosden. And uh, they were very talented people. Their radio show, Amos and Andy, was the biggest radio show in America for, I don't know, 10 years running. I mean, it was very, 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 very popular. Anyway, let me turn on the air conditioner here so that I don't start sweating or feeling uncomfortable. Or, you know, it also makes me drowsy if it gets too, too warm in here. Anyway... We have some people waiting tonight. It's Friday night, and we always don't ever have any trouble getting people to the program. So uh, let me bring them all in here. Uh, here here they come. Here's uh, Charlie Wallace and uh, Jeff and uh, uh, Alan and Charlie and, uh, yes, Josh. Hello, Josh. How are you? Good. Good, to, good to see you. Yes, and um, let me see here. What do I got to talk about? Are you going out over the internet? What? Are you going out over the internet? When you were just talking with your monologue, it didn't have your picture in the square. Oh, I see. I see. You're right. I, I didn't put my picture up here. Okay. There I just, that, I I just had the Alex Ramble thing. <clears throat> yeah, you know. Yep. Hey, okay, as good. I get older, I have these problems, <clears throat> okay? Don't, don't give me a bad time about them. Not giving you. I just want to make there sure you're going out over the air. No, we were going out. It's just the picture was of me wasn't going out, and that ruined my day that I didn't get to see did, you. Did it really? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. So I got to get. What was it? A, a text tonight from uh, from uh, uh, our old friend. Uh, what's his name? Phil Meyer. <laughs> Phil Meyer. He's uh, in. He's hmm. in New York. Yeah. And he yeah. wants to see me Monday at, like, around noon because he's make, taking, having a flight going back on, uh, at 4 o'clock that afternoon. There you go. And I'm thinking, God, he really wants to see me, doesn't he? He's here for a whole weekend, and he can't <laughs> take time out to see me? It's mainly a business trip. What? And, and to show his new girlfriend around town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's hmm? something to do with the, the company that he owns the franchise. <clears throat> uh, well, no, he said he was coming in for the uh, for the beta, uh, the uh, what do you call it? What's that 
tunnels, kind of, tunnels yeah. to tun whatever. 4K. Tunnels to the toilets or something. Yeah, four K. Yeah. And I'm thinking, he doesn't run. He's not. It, neither one of them are going to run. They're going to walk it, according to him. Oh, oh, okay, sure. You know, they know how long it is. I yeah. don't know. I didn't. Oh, it's I don't know, ten, fifteen miles, something like that. No, really? Yeah. Wow. Well, I can't even walk up the street now. This is get, it's getting ridiculous. I'm, I went I went up with Marjorie. Coming back, I was better off than going down. But I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to get through an airport. You know, let alone. Uh, um, well, tell them to come out and visit you. What the hell? You can get yeah. an Uber and come visit. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with my walking. I'm, oh. I'm not going to walk. He's going to come up here. No. Oh. So I <laughs> told him come over around noon. And I can get rid of him by around two, so he can get out to the airport, and that's it. I, it's the most I have to see of Phil Meyer. Mm. Yeah, Tony called me and texted me, and he was pissed that Phil's not making time to see him. Oh, really? Mm. No. Did Tony really say that? Yes. Yes. Oh, well, and Tom then he called me, and we talked on the phone. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I'm actually kind of surprised that Phil. Went all that way. He's seeing you. I can't take a couple minutes to see Tony, but well, well, you know what I do, I, and 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 this is absolutely true. Let's say I come to San Francisco. I don't tell anybody I'm going to San Francisco because what happens is somebody's going to be pissed off that I didn't see them, right? Okay. So if yeah. you don't if you don't tell people where you're going, and then maybe when you're there, you go, "Hey, I'm in I'm in San Francisco. I'd like to see you." Right. Then you're determining who you're going to see, as opposed to, "Oh, I got to see so and so, and so and so wants to see me, and yeah. if I don't see so and so, they'll be pissed off at me." Yep. Yep. So you just don't tell anybody. You know, that's the best way to do things. Anyway, so uh, it's Friday, and uh, uh, another week has gone by, and, uh, uh, you know, it, it, how, how's it, uh, Josh, how do you think the, uh, the, uh, uh, the election is coming along? How do you think uh, Kamala is doing? Do you think she's going to pull it off? Well, very good prospects for it. I mean, it's close, you know. I mean, things keep trending that direction, but... You know, from everything I've been seeing, you know, I'm a little out of touch this week, but from everything I've been seeing and the little bit of stuff that I've looked at, you know, a lot of good polling data is trending and things like that. Um, you know, I heard this morning that her campaign doesn't believe it, but that, you know, some latest polling in Nevada, for example, indicated that the lead in Nevada was almost seven points for her, which was shocking. Um, and they don't think that it's accurate. They think Nevada will be very close, but they feel good. And, you know, I heard this morning that the campaign there feels a little iffy about Pennsylvania, but they feel very good about Wisconsin, <clears throat> about Michigan, about Georgia. And honestly, they, they think about North Carolina. So, well, what, I, what I saw with, uh, mm -hmm. with Pennsylvania yeah. is that she's ahead. Yeah, they just feel, I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, campaigns usually have so much more polling that doesn't go out to like the media and, and they pay people to actually target, you know, like certain, you know, you know, I mean, it's just a lot more focused and stuff. I mean, I don't, I don't do it. So I don't know about it. I just, just want to hear people mm -hmm. kind of talk about and go over, but you know, that's just the indication I get. I think really though, in all those States, it's just going to be about you know, turnout, because we've just been talking about this constantly, and that's all it's going to be about. And it's really, if you drill it down, it's going to be about turnout in a couple of states, you know, mm -hmm. mostly. And it's it's just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to laugh nonstop, laugh my ass off if she loses the popular vote and wins the Electoral College and is president, <laughs> so he can try and cry. I might call this show and just laugh for the whole hour and just laugh constantly, <laughs> you know, nonstop, because that would be the most you know, fulfilling yet ironic thing that any of us will ever witness in our entire well, lives. I don't you know? think so, at this point there's any way he's going to win the popular vote. I don't either. You know, you know, but I mean, it's that whole electoral college crap that just, you know, just rankles I mean, I think my ankles. that national polling, from what I heard earlier for her, that the number, the, the, the polling for her nationally 
has crept into just about 50%. And it's slightly creeping over 50%. And in the past, candidates who have managed to pull over 50% nationally are highly successful. I mean, I don't know that they've really ever... I don't know that Hillary Clinton went over 50% nationally. I don't believe that she did. Right. But anyone who has, as far as I know, has... You know, has one has it's it's almost a it's a dead indicator of a of of a coming win in the general election. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, now it doesn't always happen, right? Because you know it's possible to have two candidates and neither hits fifty percent. You know, they hit the mid to high forties, and then you always have you know people who are voting for other. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. It doesn't happen a lot. So the fact that it's there, she's in the high forty nine percentile is my understanding and creeping toward that 50 percent people are taking that as a very good sign you know and i think what's been good for her is that every day that goes by they move they move forward you know i mean it's like you know sports organizations or businesses or anybody that would talk about that right if if we're just if we just do one more thing, if we do everything the same as yesterday and we do one more thing better, we got better, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, you know, if you want to look at it at the lowest minimum level for success, at least we're getting better. At least we're getting better, you know? And I think that's the case for her is that, you know, each day that passes, they continue to have positive things happen. And Trump seems to continually to have negativity that surrounds his campaign much of which he creates on his own you know well i mean you so look let know. me you know i look at her and i find her very um very likable okay in other words she's just if it, all other things thrown out the window she's just very likable she's very positive she has a good sense of humor about herself and about everything else and, and uh, you know, I just don't see how when people compare her to Donald Trump, they don't find her the more attractive of the two candidates. Well, it's it's slowly but surely trending that way as more and more people began begin to connect and, you know, look into the election, you know, and, and check her out and listen to her talk and, you know, get, get caught by the ads mm -hmm. and things. Cause you know, there are a lot of people who stay pretty disconnected from politics. I mean, you know, you would kind of, it would probably surprise you the number of people that you would come across in the workplaces and stuff who are just really not that connected at all. You know, I mean, they don't watch news or, you know, anything. So that's, you know, as, but the good news for her is, she makes a very good first impression on people, you know, mm -hmm. so people who are starting to tune in slowly because it's October now, when they see her for the first time, it's a good impression. And then they sort of remember Trump and then, you know, maybe they catch one of his talks and it's typically all, you know, boohoo and, you know, droopy dog. America's so bad, you know, and I, I think, you know, I think it'll work in the long run, but we'll see. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just, you know, his whole th philosophy is I'm going to say how bad America is because I'm right. going to scare people into the fact that I'm the only guy who can save yeah, you from it. Yeah, fix it, right. Yeah, and, and, it doesn't, and I think you know, that's yesterday's politics. It seems to be. You know, I also heard this morning that there's a lot of data that indicates that her team, her campaign, is dwarfing the Trump campaign in social media presence and ads. And that it is working among people who have been surveyed yeah. about the what they've come across from her on social media. And there are over well over a quarter of the people that were surveyed, almost 30 percent, that said whatever they saw from her campaign on social media gave them a positive impression of her and made them lean toward voting for her. But on the opposite side that same number for Trump was only, it was less than 13%. And on the negative side for him, things that they saw on Trump, about Trump on social media, over a quarter of the people responded saying it actually made them view him as more negatively and less likely to vote for him. And some of those things they saw were actually ads that her campaign put out that don't have anything to do about voting for Kamala Harris, 
it just shows Trump being a clown, basically. They put a little circus music behind it. I saw some of the commercials this morning on Morning Joe and things like that. And they, they show him at rallies droning on with his one way like this. You, you know, know what I saw today? They just play 30 seconds what, of it, and that's the ad. What I saw today that was amazing is he had uh, Zelensky. He was meeting with, with Zelensky. Yeah. And then they had, like, uh, the two of them doing a little presser, you know, where they were standing there with each other, and he shakes hands with them and so on. Yeah. And then what does he talk about? How certain things were robbed for him from him in the yeah. last election. He's not even right. talking about Zelensky and about Ukraine. Yeah. And I'm going, wait a minute, you know, don't you have any sense of where you are? You know, why'd you invite him doesn't. over anyway? <laughs> you know? He doesn't. He doesn't care. I mean, Trump does, I mean, it's, look, this is not unknown stuff. Trump doesn't but care about I'm just saying that I can't, at all. I can't no. conceive in my little rat brain here, you know, how uh, anybody in their right mind, any decent human being, could vote for Trump. He's a morally corrupt, stupid person. Yes. You know, and and uh, I'm not saying that she's the greatest thing since canned beans. We don't know. She's yet to prove she's yeah, the greatest right. thing since canned beans. But she has a good shot at it, and I would feel good about her being president. And yeah. I don't know how anybody could feel good about Donald Trump being president. When I see people at his rallies and they're interviewing him, they're going, well, you know, he's really good with the economy. Really? When? No. That's that's well, new. Right. I mean, there's, you know, I mean, all the polling that I've seen in the last week or two also is strong indicators that she's picking up heavy favorability in that area and that his lead on that is chipping away by the week. I mean, it was at one point like 30 points or whatever, and it's down in single digits. Well, in the area you know, of so. uh, of the border wall and things like that, today they came out with some kind of statistics. I don't know who did. Uh, that uh, something like 14,000 migrants have right. caused crime. <laughs> However, if you go look at the statistic... A great majority of those were while he was still president. Yeah. Yep. You know, I mean, the FBI put out some statistics last week saying that, you know, violent crime, murders and all that and things like that were down nationwide, like 17 percent or something. That's a huge yep. drop. Well, there's a big drop crime. in crime today in New yep. York City because we got the mayor. Yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, I mean, I... You know, and, you know, the rate cuts and the economic forecasts are looking good. And, you know, stock market is mm -hmm. very good. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. stock markets have their days, right? I mean, uh, I mean, every president, every, I mean, there's a day or two every year, sometimes more the than that. Market, the stock market, the, just uh, the stock market this week, the Dow, mm -hmm. hit its highest number in its history. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So... so so you know. tell me, the economy, all the indicators is that the economy is not bad. Right. The problem are people who are taking advantage of the American public by raising prices on food and things like mm -hmm. that. And that Definitely. is nothing. The pr president can't do anything about that except maybe pass some laws and, you know, uh, get some things going to prevent that yeah. from happening right. or to, you know, arrest people for... Uh, uh, you know, taking advantage of the situation, but the the all the financial indicators in the country are very positive. You know, I mean, you know, I I made some money last week. You know, so I mean, it, it's just the way it is. You know, yeah. I admit that I I bought a lot of stock and then. Uh, uh, I suddenly found that the stock market went belly up. This was a, a couple of months ago. And I went, oh, my God, well, there goes about two oh. grand of my money. And all of a sudden here, I've made money. Yeah, I mean, if you, you know? can, at that time when it did that, if you could have afforded it, you could have thrown in some more and bought the same stock while it was in the tank. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, if you have the time to wait, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some people are looking for quick turnarounds or whatever, but... Yeah, I mean, you know, if, you know, I mean, if you have the time, that would have been the 
the opportunity to, yeah. to purchase but, but, more of the but, same. But the, the notion that the economy is bad is absolutely wrong. Right. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. And uh, but that's you know yeah, it's not it's not bad. I mean, if you want to argue about how good it is or how great it is or is it the best of all, I mean, some of that stuff. What really doesn't matter? But it's mm -hmm. not. We're not in this depression. I mean, I don't know anybody that's not working where I live that you know that wants to, and and you know there are plenty of jobs in my area at least. You know, I mean, I I can only speak to that. You know, but I we talk to similar people around the country and, you know, they all indicate about the same. I mean, there's there's no one starving that I know of that, you know, because they can't find a job or thing. are some things too expensive. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm sure they are. You know, I've, yes. You know, and, and some of it is just, you know, I mean, uh, fucking television is too expensive anymore, if you ask me. But, you know, you got those are personal choices and there but there are some things you can't help or some groceries too expensive. Sure. Yes. But, you know, it, would people like the government to step in and, and, and drive those prices down through some price controls? Oh, my God. Are you a communist? Mm -hmm. Well, then what do you want? Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, you just told me there was a problem. We offered a solution. You didn't like the solution. So what do you want? You know, I mean, that's but that's the issue with Trump uh, specifically. And that's really the issue a lot, in my opinion, with the yeah. Republican Party is the answer is no, they do not want a solution. They hey, want the problem. Hey, look at Charlie. He's asleep. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, there. Hey, oh, he's okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know. I know the feeling, Charlie. You know, I was napping earlier today, and then I woke up with acid reflux. I mean, it was just one of those uh, yeah. naps that weren't doing well by me. But you know, yeah, it's they, just. Uh, I just. I, I just think there's a whole myth that Trump has created. That his people seem to be eating up, and you know, yeah, I know those people who are Trump uh, followers are having a bad time at the grocery store for a very simple reason: they're not the people who make money in this country, they're not the privileged in this country, uh, but Trump is, and when he tells you that he's going to help you and make your life wonderful, he, the guy in his whole life never went into a grocery store to buy groceries. That's yeah, all. It's just, it's it's rhetoric and it's made up. You know, it's it's like Eric Trump, you know, a few days ago saying it cost him $300 to fill up his truck with gas. I mean, bullshit. I mean. What? You're, what, your 18-wheeler? I mean, I mean, come on. I mean, that's, you know, he's, he's bitching, you know, it cost him $300 to fill up his truck with gas. Well, even a no, no even didn't. a big, huge <laughs> yeah. uh, four-wheeler or five, six-wheeler or whatever you call them, right. yeah, I mean, don't, don't take $300 worth of gas. You know, I mean, if gas. you have, a, if you have a, a, an over-the-road uh, semi-truck, you know, that, that has uh, two 150-gallon tanks on each side, yeah, 300 gallons of diesel would cost more than that, but... That ain't what he was talking about. You know, I mean, it's just what I'm saying. It's, it's just made up, you know. I had a Ram 2500 in 2007 when gas was out of control, when George Bush was the president, by the way. And it used to cost me a little over $100 to fill it up if it was empty. I mean, that that that's not 300 I mean, that's I mean, he's that's made up. So well, that's what I'm saying. They go on television or whatever and radio shows or podcasts or whatever. And they say that garbage, and the people that are listening to it are the people that love them, and they say amen, preacher. And well, you know, all I'm saying to those people who are listening who think he's good with money and he's going to make he cares about you, yeah, I mean, he gave the millionaires the tax break in this country, yeah. the billionaires the tax break in this country, not you, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course you're not going to... They ask the question, are you better off today than you were four years ago? And the answer might be no, because things have changed. Four years is a lot of time in the economy, and and uh, uh, the economy has gone up, but it, it, it's gone up all over the world. It's not just here, you know. So... Uh, gas is expensive here. It's five dollars a gallon. I have a thirty-three gallon fuel tank on my full-size van. It cost me about one hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty dollars to fill it up, not three hundred. Right. So, you know, and, and part of that that stuff yeah. is, you know, every, you know, 
how much of that is state California tax? Yeah, and by the way, Idaho's tax, which is different than Ohio's but, but tax. Some, right. The average right. in the country right now is about at $3. Yeah. Okay. And about five, five and a half here. Yeah. And that's yeah, because you got all those added everywhere. things and so Absolutely. Josh, yeah, Josh just said that. Yeah. It's all these added taxes in California. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, it's different everywhere. You know, but again, do, do we want to find ways to drive oil prices down, you know? Well, when okay. I left California, when I left California, what, uh, 20 years ago? Okay. Uh, gas was uh, $2.25 a gallon. Mm. So really, if you think about it, that's how many years, and it's only gone up double, you know? Well, according to Phil, it was $2 a gallon while Trump was in office. Well, it wasn't. Oh, no, never. Never. <laughs> if Not it was $2 a gallon in California, it would have been free here. You know, yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. you know, I mean, you know, I mean, honestly, the most expensive I ever really remember paying for gas in my life was during the second uh, term of uh, George W. Bush, mm -hmm. you know. But I mean, I, I mean, but I didn't, I'm not necessarily saying that it was his fault i mean i think he had some to do with it his organ his administration had some policies we all didn't agree with but i mean you know it, that's just so i voted for somebody else i didn't act like i needed to destroy the capitol building afterwards you know i mean i mean i voted for someone else you know yeah well Big whoopee. you know uh, who, who knows why any of this exists uh, in the minds of the American people. But the thing is, is that, that, that Trump deals in the great lie. And the great lie theory is if you keep telling the lie over and over and over again, eventually it becomes truth. You know, and um, he's been lying <laughs> for the longest time about the economy, about the wall. I mean, he, he didn't, you know... He didn't finish the wall. He didn't come close to it. Yeah. The first two years, he had total control of Congress, and he couldn't get the wall built. Yeah. Well, I mean, he got it built. He got a certain amount built, but not a, not what he claimed he was going to. Right. And, right. and people were, I saw a thing on TV where people were in Arizona were saying, hey, you see all this metal over here that's rotting? That was the metal that was supposed to be used to make the wall. And uh, they, what they didn't mention was the reason that stuff was put aside is because Trump never used it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Initially, that's why it was put aside. I mean, I did see that, you know, in Arizona, for example, his homegirl, Carrie Lake, some polling came out today that has her down tremendously in Arizona for the Senate race out there. Yeah. I mean, I heard it was like eight points or something. I mean, it, it's pure. I mean, it was a massive you know, so amount. So, you know, and the person that she's running against, uh, I'm trying to remember, Gallegos. Uh, Gallegos, I believe, is fairly leftist in his policies, you know. So, you know, maybe Arizona is slowly, you know, coming around. But well, as Arizona doesn't have a hard on against their senators, particularly, yeah. you know, if they do against Biden, they, they think that that whole thing at the border is his fault but it's not yeah you know it's uh it, it, i mean they came up with the perfect solution but trump it nixed it you know yeah, killed he it an issue to run on yeah he wanted an issue to run on and that oh, was... again that they they want the problem i mean you know i mean that's clear to me it's i don't know why it's not clear to other people you know but it, it's clear to me that they're not really interested in solutions. They're interested in having these issues to bitch and moan about, you know, I mean, and vilify the other side and try to get political power and, you know, things raise money and things like that, you know. But, I mean, and I think slowly but surely it's it's not working. I mean, what it's gotten them, from what I've seen, is it's 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 gotten them into competitive Senate races now in Texas. Yeah. Uh, I believe in Florida. You know, Ohio, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it, I mean, just North Carolina. I mean, there's just I mean, there's a couple places, you know, for sure that they shouldn't be having trouble. And and they are. And it's a couple of those cases like Florida and Texas uh, looks like they're having real trouble, you know, like, uh, 
you know, I mean, having Ted Cruz defeated and thrown out of the Senate would be a massive shift in attitude. I mean, you know, that's a look, that's a big deal if you ask me, you know. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, if 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 Kamala Harris and is elected president and Democrats, you know, maintain what they have in, in Congress right now or somehow have both houses. I mean, that's a most massive repudiation, uh, you know. I mean, I know those things have happened before, but given where we're at now, it's the most massive repudiation of a, of a political party and candidate in modern, you know, American history. I'm looking at 538, which is uh, Nate Silver. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Harris wins 57 times out of 100. Yeah. Trump mm -hmm. wins 43 times out of 100. About what you would expect right now. Those yeah. are the current simulations. Harris, 568. Uh, Trump, uh, 428. And that's uh, and, uh, no winner. Four out of 100, 1,000 simulations. So... He, you know, he is kind of predicting that Harris is going to win it, uh, you know. Um, but uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. They, he's got here simulated electoral college outcome, and he's, well, he's got the difference between Harris wins and Trump wins, and mm -hmm. I don't see how that's yeah. turning out. Hmm. Electoral college probability... Uh, bu, 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 bu. Uh, Harris is uh, pretty well in good shape. Yeah, yeah. yeah if, they, if they're somehow able to win North Carolina election night, if Harris yeah. does, after you know it went to Trump the last few times, I mean that's a massive pickup. You know, so that even if Trump does win a state like PA or whatever, it doesn't. It didn't gain him anything. You know, all it really did was reset the map anyway. So I mean, that's what I'm yeah. saying. It's a that would be a massive shift that night, mm -hmm. you know, if something like that were to happen. You know, I mean, my understanding is they feel very good about Georgia again, but yeah. um, yeah, I mean, we'll see, you know, I mean, and uh, there are people now thinking that the the nice lead that they have in the Senate race in Arizona will drive turnout, you know, and a lot of those people in Arizona will vote the Democratic ticket. Probably not all, but, you know, I mean. Again, it's a turnout election. So, I mean, you know, if it, I mean, so many of these areas in these states, if you just could, you know, move things by a half a percent or 1%, I mean, you know, Georgia and Wisconsin or whatever were decided by less than 1%, I think, mm -hmm. right? If I remember right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you drive another 1% and turn out your way. I mean, that's, that's it. Well, they, they had a, a period of time here where Harris actually had uh, almost 300 electoral college votes. The yeah, Trump's 238, but that's narrowed now. 286 Harris, uh, 252 uh, yeah. Trump. So, you know, it looks... Well, it, it, you know, next Tuesday is the vice president's... Uh, what do you think? Do you think, that, you think that's yeah. going to make any difference at all? Think? No, I, I think I think he's going to make a pull out of out of uh, uh, Vance. I mean, I think it could make some, maybe, if Vance, you know, says some things that are offensive or whatever. You know, maybe. I mean, it. It. I just think overall they're kind of turning people off to their party, in general. You know, yeah. it, it. It seems <clears throat> like. I mean, you've got Bernie Moreno, the Senate candidate in Ohio. You know, not last night, but the night before. You know, slipping on a on a tape in a in a private meeting, saying you know he just can't understand all these women who bitching and moaning all the time, being a single issue voter about abortion, and he's like half the women around here are over fifty anyway, and I don't even know why they care about abortion. That shouldn't be something they're worried about. That ain't their problem anymore. They can't even have kids. They can't even it have. It just kids. goes on and on and says more stupid yeah. shit like yeah. that. And then know? and then I guess his vote doesn't matter either because he can't have kids. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, he, yeah. just, he just says things like that that are, you know, blatantly stupid, you know, I mean, after... Well, you know, what you did is oh, you... Abortion, it, we will it, work it, this it, out, it, and then all of a sudden when he's off camera, it's like, oh, no, they we all care about that. You, you didn't alienate mothers, you alienated older women. Yeah, right. And, yeah. and guess who votes? Well, yeah. 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 
Yeah, you know, it, it's just... It's, it's not been a very no. brilliantly run campaign on their part. Yeah, I mean, he's just like I said, Moreno's on tape basically saying he's, he's tired of hearing about all this abortion is about health care. It's, no, it's not. It's just about all these women here that just want to be able to get an abortion anytime they want. Really? Come on, man. You know, I mean, I've really never met any uh, yeah, buddy that just I just want to get an abortion anytime. I, I never met a single woman who ever, <laughs> when confronted with right. having an abortion, wanted it. Right, was excited, but, but felt that it, for them like, at that time in their life it made sense for one reason or another. But yeah. I never f found a woman that went, "Oh, goody, I get to get an abortion." Yeah, you know, an uncomfortable yeah. medical procedure that you know creeps me out. I mean, and also, on, and really? also has on, with it certain psychological ramifications, because yeah. in fact Born you are man, terminating, too. you are terminating the life of a child who has been growing in you. Okay. So, uh, so that's a hard thing to do, but you do it for any number of reasons. Some reasons are like you've got too many kids already. Rape, incest. Oh, forget yeah. rape, incest. Just I've got too many kids already. I've got two. Yeah, I don't want three. I've had a hard enough time. It affects kid. the man as well. Hmm? It affects the man as well in yeah. a relationship. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's his child, half his child in there. Well, I think it's the responsibility of the uh, of the woman getting the abortion, however, to tell the man who got her pregnant that she's getting an abortion. I think that would be a good idea. They, I'm not saying they have to, and I don't want to make it legal that they have to, but I think if they did, there'd be far fewer abortions simply because they go, you really do love me? You know, I mean, and things like that. You know, they have uh, mis you know, I mean, misunderstandings. This Moreno is another one of these, you know, piece of shit car salesmen, used car salesmen, you know, that, you know, if the hoe that he has on the side got pregnant, he would be like, just take care of it, you know, yeah. I mean, and then, but goes to run for Senate and suddenly, you know, he walks with Jesus or whatever, you know. <laughs> I love these guys who walk, yeah, yeah, they walk with Jesus. I love when they do that, you know. Right. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, please, yeah. you know. I mean, really, it's 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 a joke most of the time. They could care less about women. They could care less about these babies. It's just this is just their thing, you know, to to get votes from white people and Christian people. You know, I mean, it's yeah. really all it is. Everybody knows that. Well, all of these states that are passing these abortion bans, the maternal mortality rate, the women dying in childbirth. Those are going up. Well, you know, that's the thing is, is the comments that he made are directly the opposite of what Ohioans just voted for not even a year ago yeah. for its state's constitution, you mm -hmm. know, for a, a protection of abortion rights. And the referendum won with like 59 percent or whatever. So, you know, keep talking as far as I like I said, you know, I mean, just I just fucking let these people keep talking, you know, I. I give them a microphone. Well, oh, and a I, like, I liked it. Anytime I, they want. When, when the Trump uh, thing was going on, when the Trump thing was going on, uh, the debate, uh, you kept writing me stuff like, I just hope he keeps talking. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, mean, just, I would just let him. Well, and he keeps doing it too, and he just keeps stepping on his own weenie, and it's just, it's right. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would certainly let him have as many. You know, extra minutes as he wanted. I would yield time. There would be no problem with that. Yeah. You know, because he was getting like upset and angry and, you know, starting to kind of keep talking. And all it takes is a few words too many to say something that people, what the hell? You all know, she people, had to say was looking, people you know. are walking out on your, on your speeches. Right? Yeah. And that it, drove him upset. off the wall. Yeah, he just gets agitated. So, you know, I, I was fine yeah. with letting him just, you yeah, know, just, he got his, he got seven more minutes to talk than she did. And that was, you know, that's fine. You know, I, mean, I was watching back at the replays. He just looks pissed off from the beginning. Anyway. Right. You look I agree. The, it was it, the yeah, it was interesting that I was watching this documentary they've done on Netflix called Mr. McMahon, all about the WWE slash F, mm -hmm. uh, the wrestling federation and the guy who runs it. And, uh, it, you know, uh, Trump appeared at a couple of WrestleManias. <laughs> right. 
Uh, and one of the people, one of the wrestlers or something who was being interviewed said, you know, Trump has always been a wrestler. You know, he, he runs what? his entire campaign like he's a, a, somebody who's a wrestler and, and is playing out a role, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, and he said he, 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 he felt very at home being at WrestleMania. Because that, that was the same kind of thing he's doing now when he's running for president. It's a it, big act. It's a big, it's a big act, act like exactly. Yeah. You know. Well, I'm sure it is. Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, Donald Trump could care less about any unborn baby ever. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not act like that's yeah. not the truth. Ever. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, it's just like, it's, I mean, it, at least for the people that I've known, that really did feel that way and had, you know, even if you don't like it, you know, but had genuine is the word I would use, religious beliefs and things like that. They were at least genuine in what they believed. I mean, they really were, you know, and I can at least respect that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't maybe agree with it, but I can respect it because I believe that they believed it. They were genuine about it. They were willing to do things to support it. You know, they were willing to take women in, get them off street, you know, whatever. You know, they had a genuine belief in a genuine his, policy uh, idea. I'm, I'm, I'm but other Greg, people who do it fake. I'm trying, I, I just, I'm I trying to remember them. what his name was. Started with an H. His daughter wound up being the press secretary to Trump. Um, yeah, the Huckabee. Huckabee. Uh, yeah. uh, I interviewed Huckabee. Came in the studio and I interviewed him. I like the guy. Very amiable. Very, very decent, amiable person. Oh, his, whole, his whole center, political center, is the fact that he's a very religious guy. I think he was a, he was a preacher or whatever, you know? So in, in, in the fact that I don't agree with him on what he has to say, I understand his sincerity in believing it. Yes. Okay, and so therefore, I'm not going to fault the guy. You know, I don't agree with him, and I don't want to see him, you know, infect infect his beliefs in my life. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter was, he was a decent guy. He was a you know a very right. amiable the person. Is, the problem is that all these people have the right idea, but tr he has dragged Trump has dragged his little dumpster into the picture, and yeah. put all those guys into the dumpster. And now they look like shit. We don't know whether they're think you know whether they think that way or not. Now that they're following Mr. Trump, mm -hmm. you know the whole the whole thing is all up in the air now. Plus the separation of church and state, that's totally where the hell is that? You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I mean, I you know the 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 people who who pursue that kind of stuff fake and th I just can't I can't stand it and I can't stand you know, uh, the religious element, uh, uh, believers in Christianity and things like that, who, who are really so naive as to believe that they can accomplish these things through somebody like Trump. Because if you really believe your Lord would have sent you the devil, basically, to accomplish his work, I'm sorry, but I have to attend somewhere else because we can't, I can't, you know, well, I can't I, I can't that. understand I how can't if you're it. a religious person, you can be with Donald Trump. Oh, I, I don't uh, either. Know, I, I really totally, never have. Totally no. immoral person mm -hmm. who right. who breaks all the commandments. Because mm -hmm. quite honestly, they're probably using him as a tool as well, just like everybody else yeah. uses him as a tool. Oh, we're going to get what we need from him. Mm -hmm. The other side ain't going to do that. And that's yeah, but the doing. small they're guy, the him. small guy who goes into the voting booth doesn't think in those terms. Exactly. But no, they the think in terms the of the fact does. this guy is going to help us out. Well, and, and the fact what they is, want. he's the never, he's never, he, if you're listening to me and you don't make a lot of money and you have a, you have trouble paying the bills every month, he's not the guy for you because he doesn't understand you. He's right, playing but, you, but he doesn't understand you. Right. So he's dragged into that section of it and then the big guys with the money are using trump as a tool to get in and get the, what they want done and they can have all their minions hanging on to their 
coattails doing the same damn thing. And I might say to those people, I know how you feel about having to work, you know, constantly vote for the lesser of two evils. And I'm not asking that you vote for Kamala Harris. I'm just asking that if you don't like Donald Trump because you think he's immoral or you have questions about pulling the lever for him, then don't even vote. That's your way of, of well, not well, voting for Donald else. Trump. You know, or Green Party or somebody, but you can well, vote. No, but you don't have to. Vote. You don't have to vote for Kamala. Just don't vote for Trump. Just don't vote, and that right. will well, will be you. You because know, I believe I, I believe that not voting is as much of a protest and as much of a vote as any other. It just because it does you know it does affect the uh, the balance of everything. And People like to pull the lever on something. You know, they like to say they went and voted. So let them go vote for whoever, June, Jane, June, or whatever the hell her name is, and a couple of those green parties or whatever, and just do your vote there. Yeah, and I just I voted. just don't know that voting for any of those other parties is going to change anything, though. It's not supposed to, because not voting isn't going to change anything no. either. Here's the thing that I'm believing that when we look at these polls, what is a poll? Well, it's a thing where they go out with a clipboard, and they ask a bunch of people, who are you going to vote for? And they then look at them and say, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. I'm going to vote for Kamala Harris. Okay. Now you've done the polls, you see the polls, you see who wins, you see who loses. Now there's the practicality of the election where somebody has to actually get off their ass, go yep. down the street, and pull a lever. Okay? Which has been the Democrats' problem for a long time before all this stuff started. Right. Remember right. when they used to sit back and say, oh, well, we got this in the bag. Let everybody else vote. And right. Then I don't, I don't think that's going to happen this time. But I do think there are a lot of people who, when it's time, there are people enthusiastic about her. There's nobody enthusiastic right. about Donald Trump. Those people aren't enthusiastic. Yeah, and so that. that lack of enthusiasm may mean they won't go down and vote, period. I, call, there's call a it little again. more enthusiasm than you think there is. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Alan. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk about it. College kids who have never voted before are in big numbers going to vote for Kamala. They so, see her, the way she does things and everything, more to her, their liking. You know, my they're not. up in Oregon and she keeps asking me, when, when am I going to get my ballot? You're going to send it to me? You're going to make sure I get it in? I said, yeah. Yep. It's her first time voting and she wants to get in on it. Yep. Well, they're not, said, they're not polling at the college. Well, she, she has a good reason, too, because she's right. got somebody. I'm happy that she's got somebody that she can really be enthusiastic about. Yeah. Because how many times have you gone into the polling booth and voted for somebody you didn't feel enthusiastic about? That's yeah. right. And so I think that uh, that's one of the reasons what Kamala's got, Kamala's got going for her is that enthusiasm trumps the, any of the other Democrats who never voted in the past. I mean, I wasn't going to vote this year. I figure, hey, I don't need to vote. It's New York, you know, whatever. And it's Biden. But I'll tell you, I'm going to vote because I well, feel enthusiastic. I feel enthusiastic about her. I feel good you about pulling about the lever. California every year. Huh? Or every election in California. That's what, you know, the state is last. Yeah. The, the you know the damn oh. you know eight o'clock comes around and everybody already knows what's going on. I, and... I hated that one one night. I was working at, at KML, and we were going to do election night coverage, right? And I get in my car in Sausalito, and I start driving across the bridge. It's like you know, seven thirty or whatever, and the polls close at eight o'clock. And as I'm driving across the bridge. They call the election. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm going and I worked the election before uh, yeah. I worked the elections before all this mess, and I see the difference between then and now. There's a big difference. I mean, there is a big difference. I mean they don't yeah. this thing probably won't be called for two or three days. Correct. Yeah. And that's when everything's gonna go haywire and that's uh -huh. when all the stories will come out. And that's when Trump will have the U-Haul trucks backing up to the, you know, 7-Eleven yeah. and stealing envelopes. And, oh, yeah, they were down by the creek, you know, dumping them. And all that crap's going to go on in those two days. And, they'll, and he'll complain about the 
the post office and he'll complain about the mail-in ballots and he'll complain about everything. He's already priming everybody for that. But anyway, at that election where they, uh, I'm driving across the bridge, I just turned around and went back home and phoned the station and say, you do it. <laughs> you know, there's just no reason to do it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I often felt that they shouldn't uh, ever call an election or totally count up the votes until the last state has come in. Okay. I agree. And then, then you do it. But I, I mean, agree. you ever heard anybody lately say, "Well, gee, we better wait till we get the California numbers." No, the news people have to have the first story. Mm -hmm. We got to get the first word in. We've yeah. projected. Yeah, we've projected. Well, now, this I will is say that. I mean, I do think there is a good enthusiasm, you know, for her and against Trump, you know. But I mean, I I don't know what it is. I sent it. I told these guys the other day, I, I've never seen before, you know, I drove to the little town to the pharmacy Monday uh, to pick up some prescriptions. And my wife had mentioned it a day or two before, but I hadn't really been to town. And I will say I have never seen for a Democratic candidate ever as many signs as I saw on Monday for Harris ever. That's an you know, I don't think she's going to win this state, you know, even though Democrats used to win it. But for, for the county that I live in, I mean, I was shocked. And what was even more shocking was at least a half a dozen of those houses were like all out. They, mm -hmm. they, I mean, they went, they went Trump. I mean, they had these huge hand-sewn flags. We're not going back, plastered in the yard that were 20 feet long. And they had 14 Harris signs all through the flower beds and a, a picture of her at one house. I mean, it was like... You know, you can tell this merchandise just started to come out. The campaign finally got it sent out, you know, from where it was on. Like, I just got my yard sign, you know, a week or two ago, and I was one of the first people to buy one. And, you know, they finally got all this stuff out, and it just, like, the last 10 days here, it just exploded. And I've never seen that many uh, signs and advertisements of, you know, uh, support for a democratic candidate you know i'm i'm looking at ohio Never. i'm looking at ohio and uh, uh, and trump is plus nine in ohio yeah i'm sure yeah why i mean ohio i always think of ohio as an eastern state you know mm -hmm. it's a it's a northern state yeah you know and yet what well, used to vote democrat i mean obama won ohio twice uh you know, and and Clinton, I believe, won Ohio twice. Uh, went to George W. Bush, I think, both times, but it was very close. Remember the one between he, between he and John Kerry? Uh, they couldn't even call Ohio that night. They didn't even have. They couldn't even call it till like late the next day. And Kerry basically just conceded it and didn't ask for a recount. That's how mm. close it was. I mean, even Texas. So, I mean, you look at Ohio, and it's plus. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, what did I say here? Said nine. nine, which I, well, I that, believe that was that was no, no that was nine. You know, uh, was it nine now or was it uh, okay? It's plus eight. Yes, yeah, plus nine. Texas is only plus three. Right. Yeah. That's it's it. very close. Right. Yeah. You know, Texas. But, is, but how? But tell me how? Like in Ohio, where he, Trump is plus nine, Sherrod Brown, the Democratic candidate for Senate, is leading the Trump picked Bernie Moreno for the U.S. Senate race. Oh, wait a minute. Texas is <laughs> plus three. Texas is plus six, excuse me. So, so you know, there are some signs there that some of that Trump stuff is wavering on but some But give me, people, give me, you know? tell me this. Ohio, all right, when it comes to the Senate, the Democrats are plus two. Right, that's what I'm saying. That, that's so exactly why, what why I just said. It. Why, I mean, why doesn't that enthusiasm right. carry itself over to the vote in Ohio for president? Mm -hmm. You would think that the people who go in to vote for the Democrat are going to go in and vote for Kamala. Right. Well, you know, Sherrod Brown's an incumbent. You know, he, he's been a three-term senator, and and he's a very moderate Democrat. He mm -hmm. He will support some, not all, but some of Trump's tariff policies, uh, because he's very pro union jobs here in Ohio. Um, you know, I mean, he will. I mean, there are a lot of things that he will give ground on. You know, and meet conservatives or Trump supporters, whatever you want to say, mm -hmm. in the middle. Um, but yet, also does enough 
to satisfy the hardcore liberals, you know, ACA support, you know, union support, the, those kinds of things. But, you know, he's very anti-China. Um, and if you so have, is there so, anything you know, that Kamala you know, can do to to get Ohio? What does it take? Uh, Drop well, a lot of signs. She would have to come here a lot and spread that message and <laughs> You know, but I don't I don't think they're going to do it. And I think that they've decided that they don't want to risk it, because if they do, the Trump people will somehow start tying Sherrod Brown to Harris and okay. that they, they're right. afraid that they will lose that Senate race. And that if if they do, that will maybe that will possibly unless they somehow defeat Ted Cruz. That I'll will tell you, I just I just Senate. I just want us to get rid of this whole hey, up. Get rid of this, right. yeah. But get rid of this electoral college bullshit. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we really have to. We're Sherrod really Brown, to. for example, the the senator that you're talking about, didn't attend the Democratic National Convention. You know, uh, he didn't speak at it or attend it, and the reason was he is just keeping himself away from the national campaign. He is running his own campaign in Ohio. You okay, know? but that's smart. Right. That's right. You know, I mean, he's got a commercial he's running right now that shows him standing next to Donald Trump in the Oval Office while Donald Trump is signing some kind of bill that Sherrod Brown voted for and was at the bill signing. And it's got there's a picture of Trump handing him one of the pens, you know, and, and that was his point, you mm -hmm. know, because Trump has loved here, you know, that, you know, he ain't my guy, but I worked with him when it was necessary for Ohio, yep. you know, so it, it's you know, I mean, we'll see. I hope he wins. I love Sherrod Brown. You know, I always have. But it, it's it's just tough because this this place went cuckoo for Trump. And I look, I can't understand it. I can't really stand living here. But but like I said, <laughs> I will say I've never seen as much support come out for a Democratic candidate as I have this year. Okay, okay but let's look for a moment. Let's look at uh, New York State. Uh, and uh, let's look at what we got here. Uh, we got a, our mayor is in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy, I mean, I'm not. I'm not surprised. I never thought he looked completely legit at any time. I would agree. You know, and uh, it seems as though this guy was just doing a lot of hinky stuff. You know, mm -hmm. but he'd be smart to resign. But, of course, he's what doing what most politicians do in this situation. They refuse to resign until somebody literally takes yeah. a, you know, a, a, a crowbar and shoves them out the front door. And it's politically motivated, you know, which, uh, no, it's not. But, you know, I mean, that's, uh, he, he, he's, 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 uh, he's, you know, he's acting like Trump. Oh, yeah. uh, immediately it's somebody else's fault. Somebody else is out to get him. Huh? What, they yeah. refuse to admit that the fault lies in their stars, right. that they caused, they that caused the problem. He did some things that he should not have done. And as a former police officer and as a mayor, he should have known better, and he obviously does and just didn't care. Maybe as a cop he felt entitled. Maybe. You know, that's always Maybe. possible, you know. But When you enter the realm of taking money from foreign governments, I'm sure Patrick would agree, you're gonna, you lose a lot of sympathy for me real quick yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> wow well you know we we're we're talking about the election a lot folks and the reason is, is because it there's a lot to talk about you know <laughs> this is uh this is one of the most imp i think this is probably the most important presidential race in my lifetime really yeah, yeah. I, th I can't think of uh, can you think You're of one in a book too uh, Je yeah, Jeff, can you think of anyone that was ever more consequential than this one? I know for me, JFK, is for he won. Yeah, but it wasn't <laughs> consequential. Was... I mean, yeah, you know, so it was almost desirable, but not. Yeah, he was the most desirable. Yeah, but this right. is this is if this is for all the beans, you know, if yep. if if right. Trump wins, we're in great big trouble. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Listen, I want to thank you, Jeff, for joining us once again. Mm -hmm. And you seem to get the sound problems all solved tonight, and everything yeah. was fine. Uh, listen, uh, Alan, uh, good seeing you as well. Have a nice weekend. Charlie, a nice weekend to you. Josh, I'll probably see you tomorrow. 
Uh, Kevin, I'll probably see you tomorrow, too. We do a little thing privately that, uh, you know, and I never last more than an hour that I'm too sleepy and tired. Uh, but anyway, hey, thank you all. Uh, give, your, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel. Where am I? Here we go. Here, wait a minute. Here we go. There we go. Okay, let's push the button. And uh, that's them for tonight. Uh, coming up next, Amy Manuel. She'll be here with the uh, intersection. She'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday for our uh, pop-up show, which goes out over Facebook. And uh, then we'll be back again on, uh, let's see here, next, uh, next uh, Wednesday. Uh, 10.30 Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? And have a nice weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.